Hi everyone again uh, we are continuing the LPS um, class and uh, today we are continuing with the TK um, session. Um, so in the last lecture we saw uh, some of the additional commands uh, of TK mainly we talked about the canvas how to create the canvas uh, what are the item attributes how to what are the bindings of the tags and uh, all those things. Today we are going to look at one example of uh, using a canvas and this is one application that we are going to build um, and then I am going to take you walk you through that application um, and see like I mean whether we can um, make use of some of these concepts that we learned um, in our class. Um, so again the canvas uh, widget is um, it manages a 2D collection of uh, graphical objects. Uh, lines, circles, uh, images. We actually went and like put some smiley face with um, a circle, and then two small circles with um, um, black uh, color in it. And then we also drew like some arcs to represent the mouth. And uh, so we we actually now have a fairly good understanding as to how to draw this. Um, so I'm going to go through this particular uh, example. So the application that we will be building is uh, this furniture arranger application. Um, it is a simple app to help you to decide how to arrange the furniture. And we also use some drawing primitives to represent pieces of furniture. So here there is an oval, some um, squares and rectangles. So these represent the furniture maybe with the top down view you can say. Um, and then we use, we will use multiple tags per item, and then we will implement the behaviors based on these tags. So let's see what how we can do it. So we define some procedures. So here, like we are going to define the procedures up front. So here, procedure called setup canvas. This is essentially like I mean we first um, erase everything, um, all the windows uh, attributes. And then basically, like we will build the canvas. So this is the create canvas command. Where we create the canvas, and the <coughs> the <coughs> widget is dot c, and then we say like uh, the pack command. And then we create those chairs. So those are the the small um, squares here. So we create them. Um, so for each of these uh, numbers essentially like I mean we create a small rectangle and um, essentially like I mean that is um, um, <coughs> um, with um, the actual location basically like that is what uh, these represent. Um, so uh, and then we fill the thing with uh, the red. And then we will tag as uh, chair and furniture. So, the, as in the furniture big picture, this is, this indicates the chair. And then now we will um, set up the chair behavior. For that, we use the bind command. And then the bind command is essentially the like, I mean, we say that basically um, we capture the event enter, and then we say basically it's. Um, um, Current the so basically we we take the con the um, chair to the current location and then fill it with blue and then if uh, the uh, if the leave command is uh, given then we basically like uh, we move it and then we fill it with red so that it can be moved. Now the second one is we create the table that's those uh, the oval shape figure here basically so um, so for creating the table again we create the oval and now we'll fill it with pink and then we create some tags for it which is table rotatable and furniture um, and then again we we say similar kind of um, um, binding that we create which is the table behavior is basically based on the events so it turns into sky blue and then back to pink and then the couch is actually represented as a rectangle in the in this picture this is this one 
So this is a chair. This is a table. And this is a couch. So the couch is actually filled with orange and then we have a couch also is rotatable and then it is a furniture. Uh, and then we have the same way we define the um, the bindings and then here the binding is basically like it's, we fill it with uh, green instead of uh, orange. Now we need to also we since we are um, generating tags which are rotatable uh, so we need to define the tags also. So here we know notice that actually like I now is actually these are all like uh, oh this is uh, so here we denote all these uh, bindings here. So the rotatable is essentially like I mean we bind it to button two, and then that causes it to rotate. So this is one of the most kept buttons. And then we also need to set up the furniture behavior because that is the highest uh, hierarchy, uh, highest level of hierarchy in this um, tags. Basically, this is all furniture. This is furniture, and then we looked at chair. Chair is also furniture. So the way that we define the furniture behavior is the button one, where we what is the um, current x and current y. Okay. So and then we also um, generate the motion which is like going to click on it and then you can grab it to move a particular furniture that move is represented as um, basically we say that it is move from current to the or basically like I mean the current position is moved to whatever we captured the previous one the percentage x and percentage y from there to the current x and current y so we just add that and then that is what your new position is and then that is set as the new uh, current x and current y. So once we define this uh, all these procedures uh, now we are ready to actually move and then now um, we also want to do some um, uh, rotate uh, so the procedure rotate is essentially like um, so we um, find uh, what is the element that um, from that window like what is the selection and then we also like set the coordinates to that particular coordinates and then uh, we basically um, um, move it uh, or essentially like find the new Coordinates based on this formula, basically, which is uh, we subtract the the original one um, by two. So now that becomes the the new coordinate essentially by uh, doing some more manipulation, and that's the rotate function. Basically, what that means is like you can grab something and then rotate it um, whichever way that you want. So that's what uh, this this, this uh, procedure will do. Now that we define all the procedures we can now set up the canvas basically using setup canvas which is already defined as a procedure here which is what creates the canvas. And then we the bind the top level um, window to control uh, L and then that sets up the, con uh, the canvas. And then we basically put the title as the furniture arranger, which is right here. So it's a fairly simple program. I think uh, you, sh you should be able to um, um, just um, go through it and understand this. So So now let us look at uh, some more topics essentially one thing that I want to introduce you introduce to you is this uh, ticklets um, ticklets are just uh, plugins for um, uh, your browser 
so that you can embed a TK um, program inside the browser in browser XML and that actually now can work just like any other TK program. So um, there are some Netscape plugins which I don't know I mean so um, that uh, you, know, you can look at but mainly like I mean um, the programs run as sticklets inside the browser and it needs you need to remember a few things one is the file system access is severely restricted so you don't want to try to access some files where you don't have permissions for and then EXCC using EXCC is prohibited so you don't want to use that and the network access is also prohibited so you cannot go and find things in the network and grabbing display is also prohibited because uh, you don't want to grab display from um, during the execution of the program so that it will never come back basically. And then um, the direct window manager interaction is also prohibited so you don't want to interact directly with the window manager to gather anything and then there are no menu widgets so as long as you can keep track of this you can write your own um, um, tickle or ticklets um, which is embedded TK programs um, and what do you what can you do with ticklets basically like you can design tools like calculator on the fly. Um, you can do like graphical demonstrations and games design games uh, in the browser in the net. So uh, that is about ticklets and um, mainly like I mean for using a ticklet the user needs to have the install the plugin. Um, ticklet file system access is limited to using source and load script directories. So those directories are open for you so that you can source it or and load the those uh, scripts essentially uh, and then uh, you have to use open as a read only in the script directory so you can read from the script directory but not write to it and then uh, Using the new command make temp to create read write uh, temporary directory, so that is the bottom line basically. Like, I mean, so you can use only like these kind of things, and then you cannot get a file listing, and there is no standard in no standard or standard in. Some commands have extensions uh, to help, like, for example, the image data can come from a MIME encoded string. So if you if you were to take the furniture mover and convert that convert that into a ticklet, basically things that to do is uh, one is the first of all the furniture mover application itself makes a perfect ticklet. Uh, anyone in the world could rearrange the furniture. Um, there is only one change to the source basically like uh, the, this is the one which is if info exists embed args equal to zero then do the the window manager the embed args is an array containing the parameters from html um, can use them as a command line arguments for the ticket so let's create a html page for uh, running this furniture uh, mover so here we uh, call the title and then the body is essentially like here the embed source the furniture dot tickle and then we specify the width and height and then we specify what it does basically that is the info. Now we need to place the furniture dot tickle and the furniture dot html in the same directory in the or in, in your area or in the web server and then Using the HTML file with uh, even like any browser will show the ticklet essentially if the plugin is in, uh, installed. So, one thing that you can do is you can include the link to the tickle plugin page, uh, plugin home page, and a brief explanation of each of the ticklet enhanced uh, pages. So that is pretty much on the ticklet um, now we will go into um, 
the, the next topic which is essentially how to extend tickle. Um, so the basic philosophy behind that is we focus on the primitives. Some of the basics we already talked about the interpreters and including scripts. Um, we implementing new commands is another one, and then the managing packages. How do you do the dynamic loading? And managing results uh, result string, which is how do you pass the results? And then the, some of the usual library procedures like parsing variables, list, and the hash tables. So in general the philosophy basically um, it is better to write tickle scripts than C code mainly because it is a faster, to, uh, faster development um, also it is higher level and no com uh, compilation so it is more flexible. Um, this section is what we saw when we introduced tickle in the very early stages why write in C. So if we need to access the hardware um, facilities or any kind of facilities provided by the operating system then we need to use C and then if uh, the program itself is big and basically there is a lot more um, efficiency to be gained then it is better to use C and uh, the other thing is when the code becomes complex uh, the structure becomes much more important uh, so the way that definitely like I mean we need to have some structure how to write various subroutines things like that again in that case C will be a better language. So the implementing the new tickle commands that provide a few orthogonal primitives um, there are some uh, tickle commands that can actually give some extra ones so um, the low level to provide independent access to all the key features the, with this uh, primitives and then uh, it is also high level uh, level of high enough high enough level to hide the unimportant details and that allows an efficient implementation. So here we are comparing like three different uh, tickles for um, weather reports. So the goal is to retrieve the weather reports over a network from various servers. So the first tickle command is to use the retrieve report format and print on the standard output. This is too high level and so it is um, inflexible. Now we can write another command which opens a socket to the weather server select the station and retrieve the first line of the report this is too low level so again like I mean we may not use this kind of information even though this is provided in tickle. Finally the command set 3 basically uh, the algorithm that is followed is um, to return the list of all the available stations given station name retrieve report so this kind of um, thing is just right. So how do we design uh, new commands essentially so a um, couple of um, um, useful tips basically choose textual names for objects so dialog dot bottom dot ok or file tree or standard in and then use the hash tables to map to C structures essentially. Object oriented commands essentially they are um, basically dialog dot bottom dot ok and then we use configure and then we say foreground is um, red. So these kind of object oriented commands are good for small number of well defined objects and does not uh, pollute the namespace and allows similar commands for different objects and then we also have action oriented commands like string compare x and y this one is useful if um, many objects are um, 
short lived for many objects or short lived objects this commands are useful. Now how do we format the command results? Couple of suggestions essentially like make them easy to parse with uh, tickle scripts. So here like temp 53 i 68 low 37 press it 0 0.02 sky part. Um, so here it is very hard if you are using these numbers. So we got to convert them over to symbolic wherever possible. So we do not use 53, 68, 37, 0.02, and 7. Instead, we need to replace it by like I mean high temp, low temp, um, things like that. And then we can also use the package prefixes in command names. Uh, and global variables to distinguish what where exactly it is coming from. For example, WTHR stations denote uh, the uh, the packaging information for um, uh, this particular um, uh, command, and weather report is another command, and MIDI A is another one. So these kind of uh, naming convention can also allow packages to coexist without any name clashes. So now let us talk about the interpreters um, again the tickle interp structure encapsulates the execution state captures the variables the commands in implemented in C the tickle procedures and then the execution stack. Um, we can have many interpreters in a single application but just only one is active at times. And creating and deleting interpreters basically in tickle we can do like a star interrupt which creates an interpreter with the tickle interrupt command and then we can assign the interrupt to the tickle create interrupt this is another way to create one and then where we can also delete it by just doing a tickle delete interrupt command. So now how do we execute uh, tickle scripts essentially, so here um, we have this um, variable declared and then we can use tickle you have enter with the set a equal to 1 this is one way to execute the tickle script, the other one is essentially like we can load put it into, into a file called init dot tickle. And then we can just say tickle eval file interp and then that file name. And then finally, we can also uh, specify in a different way, which is using the bar eval command. And then here we give like the interp set a and one as uh, three four different objects. The code itself contains uh, whether there is a success or failure and uh, it comes to like tickle ok uh, if it is a normal completion and then generates tickle error if uh, any error occurred uh, and always occurred during the um, execution. We can also point uh, to the result through the interp um, arrow to result and that points to the string. Um, uh, that is uh, has whether it is a tickle ok or tickle error and usually what we want is uh, application should uh, be should um, display the result or message for the user. Now just to another thing is where do these scripts coming from, um, 
read from the standard input. Um, I think, like I mean, you can answer all these questions. Like how, um, how do we read from the standard input? Uh, read from the script file. Associate X events, date for events, invoke associated scripts, and then uh, embed it uh, in C code. So here is uh, one way to create new commands. Um, so we call this eq command as an integer, and here we specify like client data tickle interrupt uh, interpreter and um, some argc and uh, character argv. So if the argc is uh, not equal to 3 then uh, basically um, we just throw the result as wrong number of arguments and then return the tickle error. Now the the next one that we will see is um, we do a string comparison between the data one and data two, and if they are equal, then we say basically that the com commands are equivalent. Otherwise, we will say that command is not equal, and then we just return the tickle OK uh, value. So now um, to register with interpreter um, we need to do the tickle create command inter in interpreter eq eq command client data and null. So once we register then the eq command will be called whenever any eq is invoked in the inter uh, interpreter. So we just kind of a binding eq to eq command. So that uh, if you just type eq, the interpreter knows that it needs to call the command. And we can also delete the command through this uh, another function, which is uh, tickle delete command. So the tickle create command creates the the shortcut, uh, and then tickle delete command will delete that. So here is uh, the client data essentially. Um, so the create command, we create that client data, and then we say like eq command client data client data. So um, Usually we pass only one word value to the command procedures and their callbacks, but the client data here is usually a pointer to a data structure and replaced by the procedure. So we can pass the pointers in and out of the client data type basically, um, for example like tickle create demo client data and then gizmo pointer, uh, the gizmo pointer we can define gizmo star and then client data. So Essentially, it lets uh, many object commands share one command block. So, what are the conventions for defining packages in Tickle? Um, so, one is the goal is to make it easy to input and use Tickle extensions. Tickle extensions. So, we can use the package prefixes to prevent the name conflicts. So, we basically like kind of. Uh, Pick a short prefix for a packet, for example, the RDB is read, and then we use in all global names essentially. So, C procedure will have RDB open, uh, C variable will have RDB number cuts, things like that, and then tickle will have RDB quick. So, this way, like I mean, if we follow this definite um, uh, prefixes, uh, then 
we can be successful in using the tickle tickle. So here is another example uh, of uh, creating the package initialization procedure. Uh, name of the package is RDB init. The create packages uh, commands, uh, and it, it creates the packages uh, commands, and evaluates the startup script if there is any. So how does it do it? Um, so RDB init uh, tickle interpreter, and then we execute tickle commands one by one. And then finally, we return the tickle um, eval file. To use the package, essentially, like I mean, you just give the command. The uh, compiler says uh, shared library. Um, sample on Solaris. Basically, we just say cc minus k pick dash c dash rdb dot c, and then uh, the whole thing. We can also dynamically load um, tickle programs, but mostly into tickle sh or wish. These are the two shells that can load the programs. Uh, and then tickle will call the RDB init to initialize uh, the package. The command for dynamically loading the thing is basically load rdb.so and then uh, leave it as rdb. Now the the load command uh, that can have several forms: uh, load file name, load file name, package name, load maybe it's file name and package name. Whereas the file name is um, the it's tagged as like dot uh, so z dot so so it is the compiled form of a library or library. And then the package name is x y z which. Uh, uh, and we can use the info shared lib extension to decide between DLL or, or dot so etc. We can also use info loader command to see what packages have been loaded and uh, they are active. We can also um, load packages. Uh, statically that is tickle static package tickle interpreter character what is the character and then uh, proc uh, we basically the package in it proc we just initialize here and then we just say load with an empty string x y z. So managing the result string, so we need conventions for the interpreter result or basically how the result is getting. Um, so one thing is it permits the results of any length. So and then we have to avoid malloc overheads if possible, and then avoid storage reclamation problems, and then keep it as simple as possible. So the last one is uh, earlier like the easier said than done. But that's what we need to strive. Um, and then finally, the, uh, and then the normal state of the interpreter is to invoke um, this uh, the inter interpreter essentially. So here basically like the result has some number here and then it's called pre proc okay
संदीप कैन यू पॉज द ऑडियो so as i mentioned um, we can register uh, the with the interpreter and then we can use the command uh, as the, without uh, pointing to any other place and then um, um for the client data essentially like um, so we did this and then um we can actually cast uh, pointers in and out of uh, client data uh, type by using these kind of commands actually like the create command where you are inside that and with the gizmo pointer and then we define the gizmo pointer as outside with the gizmo as a, its a class and then it's a, also belongs to the client data so the client data is usually a pointer to the data structure manipulated by the procedure so that's why we can do all these kind of things and then um the many object oriented or the object commands share one um, command prop so we talked about this we talked about uh, these things and then here we talked about this dynamic loading so the load command the load command is essentially like I mean, you can have many forms one is load just file name we can also specify file name and then the package name or load everything in the package name which is we do not this quotes here um file name is um, any kind of so signal so um, file dot so package name is just xyz inside that you can also in use the uh, info shared live extension for um, to decide between uh, dll so etc we can also use info loaded to see which package uh, packages are loaded in the system and uh, also we can load the packages uh, statically that is tickle static package um, tickle interpreter the characters in the package name and then um, tickle package init proc basically set to the init proc and uh, um it's also using the safe in proc and if these conditions are met then um something will take xyz which is uh, which is within one one other thing and then the dynamic loading is always performed with many tools and many uh, areas we saw this essentially like i mean so we need conventions for the interpreter followed by interpreter arrow result um here we want to avoid malloc uh, overhead so malloc is a c function to allocate memory and uh, you don't want to use that if possible and then we can avoid the storage reclamation problem so that is the leaks essentially um and then we want to keep the name as simple as possible so here one uh, quick example um this is the normal state of the the interpreter uh, that is the command procedure is not in work what is the interpreter state so it writes out the results and then it's uh, freeze the processes so by default the command is going to send an entry string so a static semi static result is uh, option 1 where we can um, write out saying that uh, the result is zero and uh, that's about it option 2 is the pre allocated space in the interpreter and then we can write it into that so s prof uh, sprint prof uh, s print of uh, print of uh, interrupt uh, the interpreter uh, result uh, is value is uh, percentage d and then i so that results in this kind of ui where um, um we have the result as a pointer here um and then uh, free prop there's a value for that
we went through all these things now. Um, so here, and then uh, the option third option is to allow the new space for Hogan, which is the interpreter result equal to malloc 2000. Then interrupt fresh proc is free or free proc is free, and then uh, the interpreter can put that as a thing which is in zero space. Tickle will call this free proc if not null to dispose of the result. So the result is created and then it is sent to the program for further processing while this program itself disappears. So the mechanism supports storage allocators other than malloc and free. So how do we manage uh, results essentially like we can use the library procedures typical result uh, set result is uh, interpreted in string and then replaces the old value uh, typical append result interpreter string 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 and then character star and null this extends the old value typical um, append in element and then interpreter and string extends the old value as a list. And then finally, there is a reset result which will just clear the old value. So, the utility parsing is essentially like I mean, command procedure to parse arguments. Um, so, here um, in integer, this is uh, one type of thing where code equal to ticket get in, uh, get in interrupt, uh, sorry, interpreter uh, arg v1 and value. And it stores integer values, uh, returns uh, tickle tk or tickle error, and then um, if there is a parse error, then uh, you can get like um, refund or so in uh, with our company. And then for parsing, there are other procedures. Typically, get double. Uh, these are like double in the context of floating point numbers. Uh, typically, express and double. Uh, get boolean double. Exp are boolean, and then exp are long and exp are string. Typically, get boolean accepts s, false, one or a zero. EXPR is basically like uh, variations of uh, interpreter argument as an expression. So, some more um, uh, things on the variables read, write, and unset. Um, so, how do we do it? Is basically like you set the value and then uh, value equal to tickle get var interpreter a, whatever the value from uh, that you get it. And then um, we just set the bar to uh, a a to the interpreter, and then we unset var any of the other variables already there. And then we can set traces basically, like I mean that is um, it's going from um, various things essentially. Um, so interpreter. Uh, Quotes a tickle trace reads uh, that enables the tickle trace reads and then tickle uh, trace writes basically those two and then trace proc and the command uh, the client data. So the trace proc will be called during each read or write of a monitor uh, and then it can write any override any value read or rewritten. In the parsing assembling uh, proper uh, lists are like this basically so is one split list and then merge but the more importantly like the dynamics is another one you think there are um, you see like the um, split list essentially like li splits all these uh, lists into multiple objects whereas tickle merge command actually merges 
um, list files into a single data structure. And then some flexible hash tables are initialize hash, uh, hash table, which is tickle init hash table, create hash entry, find hash entry, delete hash entry, and delete hash table. So these kind of uh, procedures are um, like having associative arrays in C. Excel may store the client data records for object oriented command. Now comes to dynamic strings essentially um, these are strings um, that can be um, handled dynamically so D string init um, we also have um, D string append D string append element D string value and then uh, D string free. So dynamic string, uh, strings actually grow efficiently without bounds. Um, this is like a good string class in C++ and used internally by tickle or result management etc. I think I am going to stop at this point we will continue extending the tickle um, actually like I will just summarize this one section and then uh, we will see the, the, the next section in the next class. So finally on the sum on summary essentially like interfaces to C are fairly simple tickle was designed to make this true so it has to be simple and then um, we want to focus on primitives use the tickle scripts to compose fancy features. So today we saw like a um, couple of big topics one is um, um, we finished the canvas widget using uh, and when demonstrated using a um, furniture mover um, program. And then on the second part um, um, we actually went through how to interface with uh, C language so how to extend tickle into C. So I think that is pretty much it we will cover uh, some more items in the next one and hopefully I will uh, wrap up next session or we may need one more session to wrap up okay thank you very much bye bye.